The goal of this part is to understand the patch of a particular vulnerability, which is CVE 2018 18611. And to do so, we're going to detail the different steps involved into patch diffing a Windows update. We explain the whole process, which is from downloading the updates, extracting them in order to retrieve both the vulnerable file and the patched file. You don't necessarily need to replicate what we explain because we provide both the vulnerable file and the patch file, but feel free to do so if you want to learn more about this process. Okay, let's get started. So we start from the CV number, which is uh, 2018 86 11 in our case. On this web page, we have a high level description of the vulnerability from Microsoft. And it starts with a description for that particular vulnerability. And below that description, we get the list of security updates for the different versions of the Windows operating system. On the left column, we see the different Windows 10 versions for different architectures like x86 or x64, as well as the different revisions of Windows 10 like 1703 or 1709. Also, the article column corresponds to the KB identifier. And in the download column, we see a link to the actual update file. It's indicated by the security update name that you can click on. And if we continue in the list, we see the Windows 7 or Windows 8 versions. Also for Windows 7, we see there are two links, one named monthly rollup and another one named security only. Monthly rollup gives you all the updated files of the month. So actually it contains a lot more than just the update associated with that particular CV you are looking at. The security only update is a minimal update file associated with the CVE. Usually, if you are only interested in binary diffing for one particular CVE, you want to just click on the security only link to get the files associated with that particular CVE. It will contain a lot less files and it will be easier to figure out which file is interesting. Again, other operating systems like Windows Server and particularly in this case, old versions. Next, we see Windows Server recent versions. As you can see, there are a lot of different updates. In practice, some update files are shared between different operating systems. For instance, Windows Server 28 or 2 shares a lot of similar files to Windows 7, but Windows Server 28 or 2 contains Windows Server specifics on top of the actual Windows desktop files. So let's say we focus on the latest vulnerable Windows 10, which is Windows 10 1809 for that particular CVE. If we click on the link on the article column, it gives us information on the KB4471332, which is the patched versions. However, we know we will also need to find the version of the file before the patch. And if we look at the supersedence column, we see it states the previous KB related to similar files, which in this case is 4467708. -708. So we would want to find information for that old KB, but there is no link as you can see in the screenshot. Anyway, if you click on the KB4471332 link for the actual patch, you end up on a page like this, which contains a link to the Microsoft Update Catalog at the bottom. The Microsoft Update Catalog website is basically a web to look for any update file associated to any KB identifier. And from there, you can select the exact operating system version because a given KB can be shared between several operating system versions, like I explained before for Windows 7 and Windows Server 28 or 2. And finally, you can download the update. One last thing to say is that the URL looks like something similar to what is shown in the slide. You can see it contains the KB identifier at the end. So you can swap this KB with any other KB and hence look for the superseded KB related to the same files before the patch. The Microsoft Update Catalog page looks like this. So you can click onto any of the download button to end up on the actual download page. And you end up on a page like this, where you can finally download the MSU file containing the updated files. To summarize, the procedure is a bit annoying as you need to click on a bunch of links to find what you need. But the good news is that you can access them all freely. The bad news is that sometimes it is not enough to get the old files before the patch, but we'll detail later how we get them anyway. For now, we are going to focus on extracting the update containing the files after the patch. 
So we have an MSU file and we can extract it using the expand command. We get a big cap file, which is another archive. Then we use the expand command again on the actual cap file to extract the actual binary files. We can see that for Windows 10 1809, the files are in subfolder hierarchy containing the R or F files, which stand for reverse and forward related to the MS Delta format. So even though the files are named .dll, .exe or .sys, they are not actual PE file and they are in the MS Delta format. And so for our vulnerability, we would need to find the files that are interesting for that particular CVE. And if you don't know which one it is, you would typically need to binary diff all of the files you guess are related to the vulnerability until you find the interesting module because of some patch that looks like a, a vulnerability being patched. In this case, assuming we know it is related to the kernel transaction manager, if we just look for tm.sys, which is the kernel driver related to the kernel transaction manager, because tm stands for transaction manager, we use the file command to confirm that they are not PE file, but they are just data related to the MS Delta format. And so there is a tool called MS Delta .py, developed by Wakfu that basically parses the MS Delta header and gives you information on the, on the file. For instance, it gives you a valid timestamp of the file. So in our case, the patch version is from December 2018. So if we apply the F file to the ISO version of this particular file, we end up with the December's version. And if we already have the December version of the file, we can apply the R version to get the ISO version of the file. What is interesting here is that the actual previous version of the file cannot be found on a superseded KB because there hasn't been any update touching tm.sys between September 2018 and December 2018. So the version of tm.sys before the patch can be found in the actual ISO related to that particular Windows version and released in September 2018. One problem though is that you need a valid MSDN account which you have to pay for in order to be able to download Microsoft ISOs. And so in our case, we download the oldest Windows 10 1809 version, which will be the first release of 1809, which will contain the initial tm.sys before the patch. And so one quirk here is that it is labeled November 2018, but it downloads the September 2018 one. But anyway, at the end, you can extract it with a tool like 7-zip and you end up with a install.wim large file that you can ex then extract again. However, the WIM file is really big. In our case, it is like four gigs. So it can be quite annoying to extract it entirely just to retrieve one file. And so to avoid that, you can use a trick from 7-zip to extract only files matching a given name from the .wim file. You basically pass the following argument to 7-zip. The first, use X to extract the file. Then the actual source file, which is the WIM file. Then you specify the output folder and then you specify the pattern for the file names you want to extract. So in our case, we want to extract all the tm.sys files and the final flag dash r to recursively browse all the subdirectories in the .wim file. So for instance, you will get the following tm.sys candidate files and you can see they, are, they all have the same md5, so they are the same file. So what do we have now before the patch that we just got from the ISO? And we still don't have the actual patched file as we just have an MS Delta file for that patched version. So all we need is to use the MS Delta.py script in order to generate the patch file using the original file from the ISO and the MS Delta file for that patch. And now finally, we have both version before and after the patch. Now that we have both files, we can use Diaphora and IDA Pro to do the binary diffing. If you don't have a paid version of IDA, you won't be able to use Diaphora though as it requires IDA Python, which is not available in IDA free. The output of Diaphora shows the list of functions that have been modified. Most of the functions are not relevant as we can see there is only one basic block in, in them. However, the last function at the bottom has 36 basic blocks 
and is named TM Recovery Resource Manager X. It looks like the TM prefix stands for Transaction Manager, and we'll see also a TMP prefix, which seems to indicate private functions that are not called externally, but only used internally to the TM.sys driver. So the next step is to show the differences for that TM Recovery Resource Manager X function. This is the output of the changes at the C level. We can see lots of changes in this slide and in the following slide as well. However, it is really hard to understand what is happening. This is mainly because all of the variables have default name that don't mean anything and there is no type defined. We can see this function takes a resource manager as an argument and the type of this argument seems to be K resource manager. However, that type is not defined and all the accesses from that resource manager are with an actual offset, not an actual structure field name. As you can see here, plus 40. And all the other variables don't have any name. So for the sake of completeness, if we look at the actual changes at the assembly level, we would get four pages of changes like this and it would be even worse. This is why we recommend to use the changes at the decompiled code level, because looking at the assembly can be really painful.